Hello and welcome to my side of the crafty YouTube room. Uh, I am Iris. I love all things crafts and arts and putting my hands on things and I decided that I would create uh, this channel to kind of share the journey with you guys. I have found my new thing for sublimation printing so I'm going to be sharing that on this channel along with other things as they develop. But um, I wanted to create this channel because I figured there may be some other people who are interested in it as well. I'm definitely new to it so uh, there may be some tips and tricks that I can share with you guys and I'm hoping that you guys will be able to share some with me. I want to do this video today to kind of share with you how I did a sublimation print on a mug. Um, so I'm going to do that for you today. I'm not going to go into too many details about my equipment uh, unless you guys want that. Um, just let me know in the comments. But I will share with you guys that I will be using the Epson ET2720. Um, I did convert this to a sublimation printer. There are several videos out there detailing how to do that. And pretty much you just change the ink. You don't use the ink that comes with it. You buy sublimation ink and you put that in here and that is what you use. Um, I will say though and share this with you guys because... I just set this up, um, what, last night or night before last, okay, and I printed out my first piece of art, and it didn't turn out right, and I was like, oh my gosh, what is going on? What's wrong with it? Let me show you guys. And as you can see, like, this is pretty thick, because I was slightly freaking out and trying to fix the problem, but I'm going to share with you guys, because I searched YouTube, and I couldn't find anybody to help me figure this out, so... Here is what my picture turned out to look like. As you can see, she's got these horizontal lines and all this stuff going on. And I was like, what's going on? And I did the alignment and all of that thing, the cleaning of the needle, nozzle, whatever. And it kept printing out just like this. You guys, quick fix. I just needed to change the paper type in the printer as well as my computer. So in case this ever happens to anyone else all you need to do is make sure you change the paper type in your printer and your computer to where it's like presentation premium matte and it'll print just fine oh my gosh that would have saved me so much time had i done that and it's my fault because i didn't listen to the tutorial all the way through on how to transfer this over to a sublimation printer but I digress. <laughs> I already have two designs that I've uh, created in Canva, which is my absolute favorite place to create um, different designs. So I use Canva, I do pay for it, um, but I'm going to print out probably one design, I think. Uh, I'm gonna settle on and put that onto a mug. And I have these things here. And I'm sure you've probably seen these around too, but I got this from Amazon. And I did a test one last night and it looks really, really good. I'm gonna show it to you guys. Ready for it? Look familiar? <laughs> so I created this one last night and on the back it says Space Buns Hun. And um, I was super excited about the way that it turned out. I do not have a mug press. I'm actually using a conventional toaster oven uh, to do it, but it came out really great. Um, some of the words in the back are a little fuzzed. I don't know if the lighting is too bright for you guys to see that, but some of the uh, lettering, uh, some of the lettering got a little fuzzed on it, a little blown out, just a little bit, but not really bad. I mean, for my first time, I'm like super excited about this, like super excited. So I'm going to be doing another mug. All right, so my image is done. I think it's printing another one. No, okay. All right, so my image is done. Here it is. I did uh, double the image on the sheet um, because I'm going to put one on the front and one on the back. My concern right now is I think this is too large. So let's see. And it absolutely is. Yep, it's too big. So let's try this kit. I still can use this for something else. I'm definitely gonna keep it. Got to mirror the image. Take two. Okay, so I have my two designs. I 
already used my paper trimmer and trimmed them and they are ready to be added to the mug. Uh, so I'm going to do one on this side front and one back. So regardless of how you hold your mug, you will still see the same design. So um, my thing about this is I like to kind of sit it down. That way I can see exactly kind of my midpoint so I can make sure it's not too close to the handle and not too far away. So I like to just sit it down and then I can use my hands and kind of eyeball it and see exactly where I want that placement to be. And you wanna definitely smooth this down as tight as possible and press that tape in really nice. And then I just take both of my fingers, kind of rub it across like this. Get it good and tight. And then I add my second piece of tape. All right, just like that. So it's the first one. And I take a look at it again and say, it looks centered. Looks good enough for me. <laughs> So now we're gonna flip to the other side and do the same thing. And I wanna make sure that it's lined up along with this one. I know there are um, other dimensions and where you can just do it all in one piece. Um, I don't know the dimensions for that right now. So if you guys know that, share it with me. Um, again, this is just my second time doing this. So I'm gonna add this one here. That's why I like to use the paper trimmer because it's going to get my line straight. So if I were to have just cut it freehand, then my line would definitely not be straight and I wouldn't be able to tell if it's sitting straight on the cup. So paper trimmer must have, in my opinion. <laughs> now I'm going to tape some more here. Um, my image doesn't have a lot of, well, well, my image has a lot of negative space, so I'm not too concerned with some of the areas, but because I do have lettering here, I want to make sure this is really nice and tight, so I'm going to add more tape here on uh, this edge here. And I believe this part is good and tight. I'm looking up here, and I can't really get my nail in there. So that lets me know that it's pretty tight. So now that it's on there nice and tight, now it's time for our parchment paper. I'm using parchment paper. Some people use butcher paper. Parchment paper is what I have, so I'm just gonna use that. I used it the last time and it did perfectly fine. Um, you also wanna tape your parchment paper down as well. So I'm gonna take some parchment paper here. Give it a good tear. And I like to fold mine uh, just because I don't want it to be too much longer than the mug itself. So I'm gonna fold it down. And then it's something about like having a double layer of protection on it that I, I like as well. So as you can see, I have extra, so I'm gonna trim that part off. that part off and now it'll fit more flush to my mug. So I'm gonna take this end and just kind of put it right here. And we're gonna pull and stretch. You wanna make sure that it is tied on your image. And this piece sticks through the other and you're just gonna push it together really tightly. Boom, the clamp and it is on there tight. Now it is ready to go in the conventional oven. I'm going to take mine downstairs. I'm going to put it in there on 400 for 15 minutes and take it out. Definitely want to use gloves, tongs, something other than your hands, bare hands, to pull this out because it will be very hot. Uh, when I take it out, I'm gonna take it out, unwrap it um, from the paper and everything else. Take a look at the image, looks good. I'm going to then put it in a tub of water just to keep it cool uh, or just to get it cool faster and then we'll take a closer look at it. Wanted to give you guys a close up of the coffee mug that we did and this one, here it is here. 
and it says diva on it I don't know if you guys will be able to tell because of the lighting but one side did take a little lighter than the other and their letters are a little blown out a little bit on it and I think it's because the way I set it in there I had it laying flat so whatever side was closest to that heat was absorbing and getting all that color out uh, the other side of course was on top and so I think to solve that because it can't sit straight up in there so I think to solve that problem I'm just going to flip halfway through my timing and see if that helps but nonetheless it did really good um, it's not terrible but you can notice a little bit of a difference uh, as far as the color this side is a lot darker uh, than this side over here